there is no business without people business but you talk about employees they are your people you talk about your vendors they are the people you talk about customers they are again people because tomorrow's organizations are going to be moved by people who will be connecting with your purpose then only you will have a sustainable competitive edge diversity is a fact but inclusion is a choice when you are kind you will give opportunities to people to put forward their points without any fear you are in this world for a purpose your functional competence is important your cross functional competence is important your behavioral competence is even more important you have to have that compassion with passion people the most difficult yet most crucial asset to manage One mantra that works like charm is to show compassion with passion. Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of Explore, where we will learn today how to manage the foundational asset of any organization, its employees. We'll understand how the mindset has shifted from profit to purpose, and what young graduates need to take care of if they are interested in pursuing human resources. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Hello everyone today with us we have a personality who has been ardently managing the most important asset of India's natural gas PSU the asset that we are talking about here are the employees of the organization yes today we are going to talk about human resource in an organization where privatization and government have come together and it's nitty gritty that this personality has taken head on and overcome each and every one of them We welcome Mr. Yashwan Chahan, Senior Manager, Group Corporate HR Policy and Employee Relation, to our podcast episode today, and we are honored to host you, sir, today. Our listeners, uh, especially those from HR background, are looking forward to the HR domain, or or looking forward to the HR domain, will definitely take something of value from today. Thank you, first of all, for having me. A very good uh, afternoon and warm greetings to everyone. It is indeed my uh, pleasure and honor to connect with. Uh, Uh, the team uh, from the example right uh, it's a wonderful opportunity of learning uh, i hope you know i can add some value to it thank you thank you sir looking forward for insightful uh, conversation uh, so the first question i would like to ask you is how important is it for an hr professional to know about the business of the organization uh, especially if the field is very technical in nature that the hr himself or herself might not be acquainted with before Yes, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Alukna. Uh, I believe you know uh, understanding the business of an organization is very, really, very really critical for not just for you know the people function. Uh, why only people function? Uh, it has to be you know learned by everyone, right? Because unless or until we understand the organization, right? When we are talking about the organizational transformation, development, you know, change management, right? We cannot understand all those things unless we understand the basic activities of the business. So hence it is very very imperative that every uh, you know uh, professional uh, right from different uh, backgrounds it could be marketing it could be finance it could be uh, the people function it could be supply chain it could be operation and maintenance they have to understand the business right uh, for example uh, you have an engineering grad joining an organization right uh, now he or she might be great in uh, in some chemical engineering right related processes but unless or until they understand how actually that product gets you know delivered to the market what are its international implications what are the geopolitical considerations which are uh, which the organization is confronting with right what is the supply chain mechanism through which it is getting delivered right and what kind of a talent is required to deliver that uh, in the in the sustainable market right so i think that understanding is really really critical and hence you know i truly believe uh, uh, that every uh, professional must understand uh, the business and everything comes second but i would highly like to highlight over here that there is no business without people business whether you talk about employees they are your people you talk about your vendors they are the people you talk about customers they are again people uh, similarly you know if you talk about the stakeholders at large they are also your people right so it is very important that you know uh, to understand that the people is the fulcrum of everything right so hence you know the conclusion that there cannot be any business without people so you have to understand people to move forward the organization in the right direction and let me tell you uh, one thing very very uh, you know vividly that in the recent studies uh, uh, globally you know uh, 
uh, in very prestigious studies that have already been established that the role of CEO or CMD for the matter is almost 60%, up to 60 to 70% is overlapping with the role of the people function. And I think that you know shows the credibility of the function. And you, we have all seen in the pandemic, if there was no people function, uh, I'm sure you know most of the organizations would have you know uh, uh, really you know, come to the pressure of the COVID situation, right? Uh, so we cannot forget that fact. And I think this people function, the great function, actually you know uh, they were able to you know stand up, you know, in front of this particular difficult you know, situation, very very uh, turbulent and and you know a VUCA kind of a real environment uh, where they took the charge globally and you know led the function from the front and organizations from the front to not just survive but thrive in the uh, new scenario. Very rightly said, Yashwant. Yes, also, like the role of HR has transformed over the years. Back in 1930s and 1940s, uh, HR was originally constructed as just as administrative and risk mitigation team with a strong focus on regulatory compliance. However, with time, uh, we have noticed that just like any other role, HR has also transformed into a more strategic role. So I think it has gone from cost center to profit booster. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think the role has gone under a uh, tremendous transition, uh, and I think it is uh, true for every function. You know, uh, every function goes through a series of you know changes, right, uh, over a period of time, right. Uh, look at you know a, a function like uh, IT for the matter, right, uh, information technology. Now, you know, uh, we all have you know seen in the past twenty years how the technology has moved. Right? Who would have thought that you know, you know on the on the Zoom platform they are going to you know have the global conversations right uh, post the COVID lockdowns? Nobody knew that, right? Uh, but I think you know they were very very proactive in 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 making those technologies accessible to the masses, not just to limited few, but to the masses. You know how you and this is how you actually you know uh, galvanize the the global fraternity to move forward in a positive direction. Definitely is. Yeah. Uh, so a follow-up question uh, from that is that how can a young HR professional today start their understanding of the business when they might not be very familiar with the working of the business? A very good question. Uh, in fact, you know, most of the uh, professionals when they enter the organization, they are limited to your, you know, uh, their their understanding of the function, right? Uh, but the fact remains that every function is has a multidisciplinary, you know, uh, connections, right? Uh, within uh, the various departments, right? For example, if you're talking about the people function, any proposal that you put up to the competent authority has to have certain uh, details, right? Uh, for example, it could be about the the background of the issue, right? It could be about the financials of the of the issue at hand. So uh, there has to be a due diligence, you know, uh, which must be put into the proposal, right? Uh, or, the, uh, or the issue which you're handling, right? From multiple uh, disciplinary approach, then only you know you will be able to make that connect with the business leaders, right? And always remember that you are always firstly the organizational leader, and then everything else, right? So once you understand that, and I think your 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 role becomes really really exciting because what you bring to the table is really really unique, right? What marketing brings to the table is really unique in their respect. That is also equally important. But what people function brings is also equally important. There can be, cannot be you know, no you know, uh, two things about it, right? Uh, uh, that is absolutely clear. And uh, this is why you know, that synergy between different functions is so, so critical going forward. Exactly. So Yashwan, another highly demanding question that we have received from our peer is that what are the roles and responsibility of an HR in a government organization? And are they any different? And if yes, then how? Yeah, that's a very interesting question, I would say. Uh, but but I, I, I truly believe that uh, uh, the role is more or less similar, right? Uh, but yes, there are certain areas where we have a, a, a completely different challenges, you know, uh, in the government sector or in the uh, public sector domain at large, right? What the, This is what I have observed uh, over the uh, past several years. Uh, but I, I believe, you know, that overall role, you know, of the people function cuts across the sectors. A issue of a talent management, uh, let's say, in an MNC organization, right, vis-a-vis -a, -vis a public sector organization or a private sector organization are broadly similar. But the level of its you know, intensity could be different. For example, in the technology industry where, you know, retaining retention of a man, uh, you know, workforce is really, really tough, right? So you have a higher attrition rate. 
but uh, yeah so so you know the intensity could be different but the issue remain the same right uh, that you have to you know uh, uh, keep them you know motivated you have to keep their morale very very high you have to keep them engaged energetic you know uh, so those things will 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 always be similar you know across the organizations right secondly you know uh, the uh, common session relation uh, related issues right uh, now that is also applicable everywhere for the matter right the structural part of it could be different for different organizations for example in mncs you know you might have a lot more flexibility you know uh, which might be provided to you uh, to to take care of their you know overall compensation and benefits or the overall reward structure right uh, but in in other organizations you know uh, um, you have a, a particular you know, structure within which you have to work so it works both ways i would say so broadly they are quite similar but yes there are challenges uh, in their own ways you know because every organization for the matter has a very different context altogether right uh, uh, you might be working in an organization which might have great affordability right but tomorrow if you move to a different organization uh, 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 where you know the affordability is a challenge the business is struggling so how do you you know uh, then design those you know uh, uh, structures or the compensation and benefits you know for the uh, retention of the workforce right that is also uh, very very different so i think you know for every organization you have to have a unique insight of handling the entire issue i'm sure after listening to you people will have a better understanding of how the workforce is actually managed in a government organization so moving on uh, so yashwant uh, this is a question that my feel awkward answering you might feel awkward answering uh, being the humble person you are but uh, what do you think uh, you did different during your career to reach where you are today i think you know uh, as far as my uh, uh, my own learnings are concerned over a period of time right from my childhood uh, till today uh, i've always believed that you know every day is a new day number one secondly uh, you uh, cannot be afraid of any situation right so always you know handle the situation with the best of your capabilities and always remember that you know uh, you are in this world for a purpose right not just to you know make a, a earning out of a job right uh, so you have to have that personal purpose as well right and i have always put that uh, uh, that you know in front i keep reminding myself on that part that how do i you know add value uh, going forward so i think that is something you know which uh, i always you know uh, kept a very close track at uh, but broadly you know i think it is uh, it is because of the humble opportunities which uh, i was very fortunate to get i would say there are number of people you know maybe you know uh, who are there who are extremely good uh, but i think you know whatever opportunities i had uh, uh, i've tried my best to make the most out of it and my 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 single point focus is always on the learning and development uh, of uh, not just uh, myself but also uh, with the people you know i'm i'm interacting with so that's uh, you know a focus area uh, generally for me uh, and uh, one more thing you know which uh, always you know excites me is about the youth empowerment right uh, in the past you know uh, to the various platforms i've tried to connect uh, with the youth at large uh, at indian society for trend development where i'm also the managing a uh, committee member we have initiated a, a, a wonderful you know series called as uh, young leaders series where we invite the you know power packed you know uh, uh, speakers from the country you know uh, uh, especially in the uh, younger age bracket right uh, to to share their thoughts because i truly believe that youth has to be the part of the the overall people agenda right uh, and uh, they have a huge huge role to play right uh, and look at the scenario which is emerging out of the covid so i think when we are talking about you know building those future leadership pipelines it's very important that that today's generation you know uh, rise up to the occasion and and take things for, uh, forward in in much much positive manner and you know uh, if you look at the current uh, challenges you know uh, what comes to my mind is that you know coexistence is going to be the key forward right uh, and uh, also you know collective wisdom is something which will all have to you know uh, practice because uh with the collective wisdom you know you can really make wonderful things so you can bring the you know uh, the collaboration you can bring the creativity you can bring the innovation right uh, even diversity equity inclusion and belongingness for the matter uh, can also lead to you know positive impact on the business it can lead to higher you know number of innovations uh, and and you know having a agile culture in the organization right 
which can really have a, a mesmerizing impact on the on the you know uh, business and organizations at large. So these are you know, some of the things which uh, which really drives me uh, 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 going forward on this. Yeah, but I truly believe that I have just begun my uh, my thing, and uh, in my very humble way, uh, I would say that uh, I'm still learning, and uh, I continue to learn. And my only objective is to you know become the best version of myself, and in that process, you know try to build and contribute towards you know building a better world for tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. So taking the most of the opportunity you have is the key. In short, yeah. <laughs> so my next question is on the behalf of people who who want to be in the recruitment domain. What tips would you give them so that they should keep in mind while hiring a person? Uh, and uh, what are the common mistakes that they might do, which you have learned across the years? Yes, uh, although I have not worked in uh, this particular division, but sure, you know, I've been part of you know several uh, policy formulations. Uh, and also, you know, several other, uh, you know, assignments, you know, wherein I've got uh, that, I would say, you know, internal insights as well as, you know, uh, understanding the uh, the overall domain per se, right? Uh, uh, my, I think, observation would be that, uh, and maybe, you know, in a way, I think it's my humble submission, uh, that, you know, the organization have to have a, a clear focus on hiring the right talent, right? Uh, a talent for the right place, for the right markets, and, and with the right, you know, degree of, the uh, requisite, you know, uh, let's say the parameters, right, which are required by the organization. But um, these days, you know, if, if if you see, look at the organizations, obviously, you know, they are looking for uh, people who have the knowledge, right, people who have the skills and the competencies, right. Skill is, is a limited term, but I think competency is a much broader term, right, because it's a combination of your knowledge, skills, and, you know, uh, this aptitude, right, uh, or the abilities, you can say. Obviously, they are very, very important. Your functional competence is important, right? Your cross-functional competence is important. Your behavioral competences are even more important, right? So I think these are some of the things, you know, which are uh, definitely there. But uh, what matters, I think, uh, going forward is that uh, you have to hire for the attitude of the individual. Because ultimately, in, in, the, in the global arena, okay, when you are talking about, you know, making a difference or an impact, at a, at a collective level or an individual level for the matter. I think it is your attitude towards the life, you know, which really matters. And that's why we call it meta skills, right? You must have heard about this term called as meta skills, right? For example, meta skills could be something like, you know, uh, being a team player or something like, you know, uh, the emotional intelligence. Uh, do you have that emotional intelligence to handle different situations, right? Or uh, something like collaboration, right? Uh, are you collaborative in your, in your approach, right? Do you have the inclusive leadership quality, right? The quality of a being you know, an inclusive leader, right? Do you believe in coexistence, right? Uh, and similarly, you know, the innovation and the creativity, right? Do you, do you have that ability to think about, you know, uh, the system in a holistic manner with the design thinking perspective, right? So these are the things, you know, which are uh, super critical, I would say. Uh, and definitely, you know, uh, the most important part of it is the attitude uh, with which the individual is, you know, working towards the organization. Because I truly believe that the moment you are hiring an individual who aligns the purpose at an individual level with the organization, right, there has to be some common grounding on that part. Because tomorrow's organizations are going to be moved by people who will be connecting with your purpose, right? Then only you will have a sustainable competitive edge. And then only you can build sustainable, you know, organizations, right? Uh, so as an organization, you have to have that understanding that uh, what are the elements of the business which can make uh, our organization move towards the journey of a sustainable world, right? Because uh, people today are looking not just for a particular job, right? They're looking for things much beyond that. They're looking for a vibrant culture. They're looking for a positive environment. They're looking for psychological safety. Look at women, you know, professionals, right? If they don't have a psychological safety at the workplace, can you imagine them contributing to the organization? It is not possible, right? So do you care about the posh prevention of sexual harassment at the workplace? I'm just talking from a very simplistic perspective, right? Uh, but I think the discussion could be, you know, uh, could be at, uh, uh, at a varied length, right? So, yeah, so as an organization, you have to move from the tokenism to, to a continuum. So not just, you know, celebrating, let's say, a Women's International Day on a given day and then, you know, uh, trying to assume that, you know, you have done everything. No, you know, you have to have 
that the uh, you know those conversations on a continuum basis right and, and you have to have those proactive steps being taken by the organization at multiple level right so that you know uh, uh, building that culture of inclusion where everybody feels valued right even just having diversity will not be good enough right if you what if you know you bring the talent from the diverse talent pool right you make them part of your organizations but you don't know make them you know uh, feel included right you don't you don't give them the voice to you know uh, put forward their points put forward their opinions right so that's very important you it's very important for organizations if they want to grow that you know they include everyone with with the you know same spirit right i think that is really the key you know uh, going forward yeah definitely i think we have to go for diversity and inclusion beyond just policy and real implementation and accepting that i also read somewhere that uh, diversity is a fact but inclusion is a choice so we have to make that choice and actually include inclusion in our organization uh, and yeah of course hire for the attitude well i guess our listeners are going to be much aware while hiring someone even if they are not in their hr domain absolutely absolutely yeah so yashwant uh, there's a term called coin call great resignation uh, for the context of the people i will tell you i will tell them what it is it is an ongoing economic trend in which employees have been voluntarily resigning from the job in masses uh, from the beginning of the 2021 so what are the changes in hr policies and practices that can be incorporated to prevent this yes that's a very interesting question in the context of the current you know ongoing pandemic yeah. i would uh, i truly uh, you know uh, understand that i think the pandemic has actually made organizations realize that you know uh, they can no longer ignore uh, the you know uh, the welfare of their people right or putting people in the in the center stage of everything right uh, of the business for the matter so uh, from that perspective you know uh, surely you know i think this is really really critical because uh, uh, for the first time you know we are uh, having uh, uh, an issue of you know public health at this level right uh, affecting several several countries you know leading to you know uh, a serious you know uh, maybe you know implications on the wage losses employment uh, and uh, businesses right supply chain and what not you know so so i think you know to uh, to handle the situation organization have to be really really proactive uh, by putting their people at the center of their policy formulations uh, very very important one i would say and i think you know they really truly have to you know uh, show that they have the empathetic leadership you know uh, which will take the organization forward right many of the organization during the covid era have developed uh, you know schemes or the policies wherein they have gone beyond their regular you know uh, interventions right uh, to take truly you know care of their employees right uh, and not just employees why only talk about employees right uh, uh, the people per se right uh, who are connected with the organization they could be your vendors they could be your suppliers they could be your contract labor right i'm like it's a huge uh, uh, you know chunk all together right uh, which is i think maybe you know uh, many many times then of your uh, total payroll uh, you know numbers right uh, uh, so i think you know uh, the organization have to look from the holistic angle uh, and uh, you have to have that understanding of multiple stakeholders of people right uh, who are connected with the organizations how best you can put forward their you know safety their uh, uh, holistic well being uh, in the center i think that's that's really going to be the key uh, as far as you know uh, the the initiatives are concerned you know uh, in our in all aspects sector many of the organizations have gone ahead and 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 taken care of their you know uh, their, their you know people in the organization uh, by way of you know formulation of schemes which not only took care of their you know uh, benefits post their let's say death for the matter but even going beyond that uh, also supporting their families right uh, uh, even to that extent you know on account of education taking care of the education of their children you know as if they were you know continuing in the employment uh, and uh, secondly with their uh, their accommodation right which they might be requiring you know in case of the you know uh, having nobody in the in the family who is actually earning right uh, uh, to that impact uh, and also uh, with respect to uh, the uh, you know the overall benefit structure per se right uh, so how do you formulate your social security net Uh, i think that is uh, something which the organizations must uh, have a very close look at 
I think resignation and retention are the two faces of the same coin. So understanding one, how to retain your employees will definitely... Absolutely, absolutely. Since yeah. you, you uh, in fact, you referred to the great resignation. So I was talking from that perspective only. Uh, so because obviously, you know, people are looking, as I mentioned, that they are not just looking for the money part. They are not just looking for the job. They are not just looking for the location, right? They are looking for uh, things much beyond that from an organization, right? They want that connect with the organization, right? Yeah. Is your organization purposeful? That is also mm-hmm. something that which they are looking at, right? Uh, uh, do you really care about your your people genuinely, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, do you go beyond, you know, uh, your normal uh, procedures, you know, to take care of your your people so that they in turn, you know, take care of your organizations? Because the fact remains, if you, you know, go, are going to put people at the center, they will, you know, continue to, you know, take the organization forward. Yeah, definitely. Also, uh, I think the great resignation is a long march towards freedom. Uh, flexibility is more than choosing the place where you work. It, it's having about freedom to decide about your purpose, your people, and uh, giving them freedom to do what they want. Uh, also, uh, Follow up to this is that as we talk about the great resignation, people who are leaving jobs are mostly millennials and Gen Z, uh, who will comprise of 75% of the global workforce by 2025, right? So, uh, and they, they value very different things in life. So how will the HR practices that were followed today change to cater this changing workforce demographics? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think that's a very interesting uh, one. Uh, uh, definitely, you know, uh, uh, the today's generation, right, the millennial, the Z generation and all, right, uh, uh, they are definitely going to constitute a huge uh, uh, portion of, of the workforce, up to 75%, as you also rightly mentioned, by 2025, right? Look at uh, uh, the context of India, you know, we have, I think, more than 65 people under the year, you know, of 35 years of age, right? Uh, so we have a huge, uh, you know, uh, number of people who are moving uh, uh, through that transition, right? And they are going to, you know, enter the workforce uh, in the organization tomorrow and they are continuing to do so, you know, uh, currently as well, right? Uh, so the challenges are definitely going to be many, many fold for uh, different types of organizations, right? Uh, in, in a public sector kind of a setup, you know, you have uh, the multi-generation, you know, people working for an organization, right? From your baby boomers to your X generation to Y generation, to, to the millennials and to the new generation now, right? So you have almost uh, the entire spectrum of the generations, right, uh, put together. And uh, in the case of the startup, you know, organizations, it could be uh, really, you know, the millennials and the then G and all, right? Uh, uh, they're going to be broadly, uh, you know, having the major uh, stake in the organization. So uh, definitely, uh, so for every organization, the context is very different, right? So you have to have uh, the... Uh, practices and the policies or the strategies uh, uh, from the organization perspective, very, very, you know, personalized to that context, then only, you know, I think you will be able to do justice uh, because otherwise, you know, it will create a sense of, you know, a mistrust in the organization, right, uh, which is not uh, in the right spirit. So um, so to connect with the uh, uh, with the today's generation, what you need is, uh, you know, moving from profit to purpose. And I uh, mentioned earlier also, you can never, you know, now think about profit. Obviously, that is important, but that is the byproduct. What is important is your purpose in life, your organizational purpose. Why do we even exist, right? What is it that uh, that is there in the organization that people should join your organization and be a part of that amazing movement, right? Which will take, you know, which will not just, you know, make the profits, but it will also create an impact at the global level for masses. I think that's you know a uh, uh, message uh, which I would like to you know leave you with, uh, and uh, the secondly you know uh, as I mentioned that you know uh, this uh, purpose part is very very important from you know moving from the profit to the purpose right, uh, but uh, at the same time since you also touched on the flexibility part of it right now today's uh, uh, you know uh, the millennial generation and Z generation they are definitely looking for the flexibility right. Uh, uh, who would have thought that, you know, hybrid working or the remote working or working for anywhere uh, that uh, for the matter would have uh, would be, a, you know, a, a real possibility. But that has happened, right? But the fact remains that, you know, uh, while the today's generation talks uh, about, you know, having all the flexibility, but the factual position remains that you can never have the complete remote world ever. Why? Because 
more than 60% of the tasks in this world which are being carried out by several people across the globe are just not possible in a remote setting. Even if you're talking about coaching for the matter, right? Uh, Unnecessarily, you have that first life experience for the individual. So the leadership development programs, you know, which are uh, uh, which are given to, you know, multiple people, right? Uh, they have to be contextualized to that particular organization. So while the flexibility, obviously, you know, is a very important uh, term, so definitely you know, the organizations have to have that agile structure, I would say, uh, in place so that they, they can offer multiple things to today's generation, right? Apart from purpose, apart from uh, agility, they can give them, you know, a higher collaboration environment, right? Uh, uh, they can help them engage in a much better manner, right? They can help the, uh, the new generation people to build those communities. So these are the, you know, kind of uh, interventions which are required. Yeah, definitely. Rightly said, as organization has to move from profits to purpose and yes millennials want their career to have meaning they want an opportunity for self-expression uh, they want lifetime learning and development uh, so yes HR policies and practices must have to change to cater to these multi-generational workforce yeah. uh, I would like to you know, just to touch upon one very important aspect over here and uh, my appeal to today's youth sure. would be that uh, uh, you know uh, while definitely, you know, they are looking for flexibility, agility, uh, 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 which is very, very important as well, right? Uh, uh, they are very uh, tech savvy also, right? But I think, you know, to be uh, or to be successful leader, right? Uh, to be a successful human being or to be a better human being for the matter, right? You have to have that compassion with passion. That's very important because unless or until you have the compassion, you cannot be humble. You cannot be kind, right? When you are kind, you will give opportunities to people to put forward their points without any fear, right? And that is when you can connect really, uh, you know, on, on a very positive note with them. And that is when the creativity will happen. That is when the innovation will happen, right? So uh, my appeal to youth would be that, you know, think beyond your roles, right? Go beyond your roles and make an impact at the, at the societal level as well, right? Uh, so definitely, you know, uh, uh, when you are entering into the corporate world as marketing professionals or or as you know supply chain professionals or as o m professionals right uh, or as people professionals, you cannot limit yourself to just having an under understanding you know uh, of your own function per se right you have to have that connect with the others as well so as to understand the overall thing and how better you can contribute you know uh, to those cross function assignments to those you know cross function opportunities right uh, so that's, I think, you know, uh, really the key. Yeah. So, wow. Having compassion with passion, I think that is the mantra we learned today. Uh, so, moving on, Veshwant, uh, what is one skill which aspiring HR students should work on, which they generally ignore in the early stage of their career? Yes. Uh, I think that's uh, one thing, you know, which uh, I would uh, definitely, you know, uh, advocate for is that your ability to, uh, to learn the learning. Many of the times, you know, when uh, when we enter the corporate world uh, or uh, when we work with an organization, right, uh, we get comfortable because we get comfortable with the with the kind of you know work which we are doing, right, or uh, uh, or the kind of environment with, uh, within which we are operating, right. It might be completely you know uh, safe for you to operate in that environment, but I think you have to have that agility, you know, uh, in in your you know uh, learnings, uh, so that you remain a lifelong learner. I think that's really fundamental. So uh, most of the times, you know, when the professionals, they, you know, they enter the organizations, uh, they get, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, I would say adjusted to the environment itself, right? They get comfortable, right? Uh, so, you know, but you have to go beyond those things, right? You have to push yourself. You have to challenge yourself. You have to move across different, you know, type of activities, right? Uh, which will help you to, you know, emerge as a better learner, as a better human being, and that will really help you to, you know, contribute uh, uh, to the larger purpose. Uh, uh, so definitely, I think, you know, uh, that is something which we all have to, you know, uh, imbibe in, in our, you know, uh, uh, dealing with the organizations and in our life journey as well. Because uh, always remember that, you know, uh, we have to not just learn, we also have to unlearn, right? And then again, we learn, right? So that's the entire process, you know, from your... Uh, you know, skilling to your reskilling 
to the upscaling, right? So upscaling will happen when you are in a particular function and you want to, you know, understand the various parts of the function, right? Various, you know, gamuts of the fun function, right? Uh, so that's what we call the upscaling kind of thing. But when you are, you know, moving from a functional expertise to a cross-functional expertise, that's called as rescaling, right? I'm like, you know, you are trying to learn, you know, the finance also a little bit. You are trying to understand how can I, you know, understand from the marketing, right? How can I apply those principles of marketing in the people function, right? For example, from the marketing, you can learn how to do the branding part of it, right? Why branding is important for an organization to attract the right talent. And that is why, you know, you have the concept of employee value proposition, employer branding. So it's, it's like, you know, a marketing in a different avatar altogether. Yeah, yeah. How do we learn from different, you know, uh, uh, functions altogether? From finance, you can learn uh, definitely how do we, you know, budget the entire thing, right? The concept which we are talking about, what is its uh, cost to the organization? What is its impact analysis for the organization? How is it going to impact my business? What is its value to the stakeholders? So this is the, you know, learning which is uh, required at that, you know, reskilling level part. part. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, most important one is about the meta scaling, which is really going to be the key, you know, uh, going forward. And you must have also heard about the term metaverse, which is coming up now, yeah. right? So, uh, so definitely that uh, the, the way technology is moving, right? Uh, so just, you know, adopting the technology is not the uh, greatest thing, I would say, right? Uh, because uh, you must have seen that uh, organizations have actually moved. Yeah, so learning, unlearning, and then relearning, and always aiming for upskilling yourself. And from the organization perspective, bringing technology and technological advancement. I think that is the thing which future HR should keep in mind from the starting of their career, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Moving on, Yashwan, one uh, question that a lot of HR professionals have is that how does a career progression for HR professional look like after doing an MBA? Yes, uh, so, you know, in, within the people function, you know, you have several segments, you know, several, I would say, gamut of activities, you know, and people function has a huge vast uh, area, you know, to, to tap into, right? Uh, right from uh, the entry, uh, you know, from the talent acquisition, right, uh, I would say, uh, which involves the screening, uh, the interviewing, right, uh, and the selection proceedings, and uh, then into the, uh, the organization, right? And uh, the moment, you know, uh, somebody enters into the organization, you have the, the entire, you know, uh, talent management, right? Uh, and retention of your workforce, right? Uh, it could be also about their performance evaluation, designing their compensation and benefit structure. It could be, you know, uh, about the overall, you know, holistic policy formulations, right? Aligning with your uh, entire business landscape, right? Yeah, definitely. I think HR professionals have a very important role and they even have a very good career progression. We have examples of like recently the CHRO becoming CEO, like Lena Nair who was the CHRO of Chanel recently became the CEO. So the sky is the limit, I think, when you work hard. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, our final question that I have for you is that uh, on a lighter note, what in my opinion is that it's very idiotic, but still I'll ask. Uh, many people have a feeling that I cracked the technical round, but I think I'll not be able to clear the HR round. Uh, while some take HR round way too lightly in overconfidence or negligence. Uh, so how would you address both these mindsets? Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, my, my submission to this would be that, uh, that you know, both the rounds are important. It's not that one is important over the other. But both are equally important. So, you know, uh, anybody who is actually, you know, uh, preparing to move into an organization, they will have to keep this thing in mind that, you know, uh, while they prepare for the overall interviews, right, uh, they have to have uh, the clear preparation for both of them. Because for an HR round, uh, you need a different kind of, you know, uh, preparation altogether, right? But for a, a, for a, you know, a functional interview, which could be related to your, you know, uh, your background, right? For example, you are from engineering background, right? Uh, you are, let's say, you know, a mechanical engineer or electronics and communication engineer. So you must understand what is wave propagation, right? What is satellite communication? What is analog electronics? What is digital electronics? So all those things, you know, the basic concepts of your your particular, uh, you know, uh, discipline. Definitely, that you will have to, you know, uh, have a very close look at. 
And while you prepare for the uh, the functional one, you must have that understanding of the basics of your domain, right? Very, very important. But when you move into the, you know, the, the HR round, right, yeah. which is about the about a different aspect of your personality, your uh, the aspect of your leadership. It's a, it's a test of your behavioral competency. So you are, you know, your functional competencies are coming from your technical round. But your cross-functional and more importantly, your behavioral competencies are coming from your HR round. Definitely. So I, think know, I, I mentioned in the initial uh, part of our conversation that, you know, the global studies are now, you know, reflecting that 60 to 70 percent of the CEO's role is nothing but people business. That's it. Thank you. Uh, it's also about, I think, understanding whether the candidate is culture fit to the organization, whether the purpose of the candidate and the organization is aligning to work in a better way in the future. So very well said. Uh, thank you so much, Yashwan. Uh, lastly, anything in particular you would like to tell our audience that majorly comprises of young minds of our nation? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, first of all, for the uh, for this great opportunity. Uh, and I believe, you know, there are uh, many young listeners, you know, who are there, right? Uh, as I mentioned, that you know, my appeals to each one of you would be that uh, we make sure that, you know, you uh, enter into the organizations with a very broad mindset, uh, with the growth mindset, right? Uh, uh, always make sure that uh, that you learn every day. And as I mentioned that, you know, that that learning, relearning and the unlearning is, is a continuous process. Right. So uh, uh, very specifically focus on that as well. And uh, uh, always, you know, think that how you can, you know, uh, make yourself better by becoming a better human being. Right. Because the moment you're moving in that direction, right, you will be able to contribute to your organization in a very significant way. And uh, also my appeal to you would be that, you know, think beyond your rules. Do not stick just to your rules. Right. Because world needs leaders like you. World needs the youth leadership for tomorrow, right? And that will only happen when you have the clarity of thoughts. And once you have the clarity of thoughts, you will be moving in a positive direction, right? Last but not the least, uh, my uh, humble appeal uh, would be, you know, that uh, that that today's youth uh, continue to, you know, uh, move uh, or maybe you know continue to, you know, activities which will help uh, the world become a better world, right? Yeah. Uh, because uh, the sustainability of our organizations is at under serious, you know, question at uh, in the present times, right? Uh, so we have to have the businesses which are not just going to survive, but they are going to thrive because of their, you know, overall thinking, right? Uh, uh, of making impact to masses, right? Definitely. Thank you so much once again. Thank you for taking out time in your busy schedule, and a big thanks to our listeners. We hope you have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Hey folks, thanks again for spending time with us. We hope you found this session of some value. Stay tuned for our next session as we will be hosting in yet another eminent personality from the industry who will take us on this thought-provoking journey through Explore. Till then, don't forget to subscribe to Explore on Spotify, YouTube and Google Podcast. Want more from Example? Check out the link in the description for our Instagram and LinkedIn handles. Thank you. Happy learning.